Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Carr and I'm with Octo Open Communications for the Ocean. Um, at Octo, I am coordinator of the Coastal Marine Ecosystem Based Management Tools Network or EBM Tools Network for short, as well as editor of the Skimmer on Marine Ecosystems and Management. Um, and with me here today, we have John Davis, who's the founder and CEO of Octo uh, and also serves as editor of MPA News. Uh, we are thrilled to have with us today uh, Howard Townsend, Isaac Kaplan, and Jason Link of NOAA. They're going to be presenting on the Virtual Ecosystem Scenario Viewer, uh, a new tool for visualizing marine ecosystem models. And we're, we're thrilled that everyone could be here today, and we want this webinar to be interactive. So, um, uh, Howard and Isaac and Jason are going to be giving us a presentation um, just, and then an actual demonstration of the tool. We'll have a live demo and then we'll have question and answer afterwards. Um, if you have questions during the, the presentation portion and the demo, we encourage you to send them in. We'll do all the questions um, through the question interface. So just type your questions in uh, and then I can relay them to the speakers. Um, and, and especially during the demo, I think that it'd probably be a good uh, time for live questions. Um, any sort of big substantive questions we'll hold towards the end, but the quick clarifying questions we can handle during the webinar. Okay, um, thank you guys. And I'll turn it over to you now, Howard. All right, thank you very much, Sarah. And good afternoon, morning, evening, everybody, wherever you are. Um, and thanks for joining us. Uh, just wanted to, Take a chance to talk about this new tool we've developed and, and make sure uh, that folks know it's available and ready to be used. Uh, so um, I will. All right. Uh, so, uh, so the you know we're going to demonstrate this tool and you know it's really a useful tool for looking at the marine ecosystems, allowing people to explore marine ecosystems and how different stressors and pressures can influence. Uh, you know, protected resources and fisheries and habitats in these systems. And it's a really cool tool that uh, Isaac uh, Kaplan's gonna demonstrate to us shortly here. Um, but the, the neat thing behind it is that it actually converts actual scientific data and, and model output into a 3D animated world. Uh, so the user can really get an understanding of a, of a big picture view of an ecosystem without having to wade through you know, a 300 page Technical, you know, technical report or something like that. Uh, but what we really want you to take away from this is this tool is freely available to use. It's uh, online, great for online learning, a virtual exhibit for your museum or aquarium or other education settings. And want to get any feedback, suggestions, anything uh, you think would be a good idea to visualize. We'd like to hear from you on that. Uh, but first, just a little back ground on uh, how we came about developing this tool. Um, <clears throat> so over the years, you know, there have been increasing calls and, and, and movements towards uh, implementing ecosystem-based management, ecosystem-based fisheries management, you know, you know, basically ecosystem savvy resource management. And specifically here in NOAA, we have a lot of mandates and regulatory actions focused on particular, you know, element, elements of an ecosystem or, or, or marine, regional marine ecosystems. Um, and then there's lots of potential interactions. Uh, and as you can see here, all the different species and, and habitat actions and those sorts of things that we deal with, you, you can imagine this turns into a, a lot of information and data, uh, but we want to have, you know, they, they can be difficult to digest, but we want to have ecosystem savvy managers and stakeholders, public and, and students, you know, to uh, enable them to better articulate, articulate desired uh, outcomes and staff statuses that we would like to see for the ecosystem. Um, and uh, people usually have a pretty good understanding of the richness and complexity of the ecosystems and are engaged in talking about ecosystems. So, you know, this move towards ecosystem-based fisheries management or ecosystem-based management should be fairly straightforward. But we find that sometimes communicating about the dynamics and the interactions in an ecosystem can be difficult to, to really distill down stuff. Uh, and over the years, we've tried some approaches, some static approaches to sort of visualizing, you know, the data from ecosystems. And they've met with mixed results. You know, we get things like this that, uh, you know, if you've been waiting through a 200-page report and you get hit with this figure, that can be a little tricky. 
or you know even more complex system like in Alaska, um, that's pretty pretty dense to try to figure out and even read most of it. Um, got some network diagrams, uh, you know, really wiring diagrams here. It's like okay, that's again pr pretty thick. And while I pick on my colleagues, I should also pick on myself. This is one of one of my attempts. I thought, oh, let's just add a few pictures to it. That'll make it a lot clearer. Some pictures of fish. Um, we have come up with some systems to, to simplify things a bit to make it a little, little clearer. But uh, you know, none you know quite captures all the dynamics and information that we, we want to capture. Um, and you know, just the fact of the matter is, you get a lot of data and model output, and it can be hard to you know to decipher. Um, and you know, you can sort of get stuck in the details of particular tables and and, and not able to. Um, pull away from it all and sort of see the, the bigger picture of what's going on. Um, you know, all, all this technical documentation and, and, and data is, is important science, but but there's also this need to, to sort of encourage exploration and understanding um, to, to dig under the hood a bit of some of the models and data and, and you know, use something to help engage that, uh, engage managers, stakeholders, students, whoever to do that digging. Um, and uh, you know, we just you know, the uptake of ecosystem information can be difficult. You know, you know, we're often a science tra trained to think on think about single species dynamics, or you know, trained to think in sort of a reductionistic way. Um, and and so uh, maybe sometimes we're not as prepared as we should be for a more holistic you know, view of a system that we need for EBFM. Um, and I, I've included one XKD slide. Uh, as uh, as is required for scientists to always present in presentations here. Um, so, you know, we came up with a solution, have been working on it, and this is now sort of our, our uh, you know, revamped version of it where we worked out a few kinks. Uh, this virtual ecosystem scenario viewer, um, it's available for PC, Mac, Linux, and, and even online. You can include a, a wide range of data, like time series from, from models, uh, surveys or stock assessments or other protected resource assessments it's really just simple files of you know comma comma separated variable type files real simple text files uh that we can read in and, and start to visualize so uh and please keep in mind as you look at this you know who's the audience for this you know we we want managers and stakeholders and and future scientists managers stakeholders and educators uh, to really help this spill this stuff down uh, it's not, pro this is sort of, you know, based on scientific data, but we're not using that to communicate to scientists per se. Um, but, you know, the, the idea here is that, that visualizations and interactive media can, can really be useful for communicating sort of high dimensional data on ecosystems. So with that said, we'll uh, switch it over and Isaac's going to take us on a, on a uh, under, underworld, <laughs> undersea view of the world. Great. Thanks, Howard. Yeah, I'm Isaac Kaplan. I am in Seattle at NOAA's Northwest Fisheries Science Center. Um, I've been able to work with Howard and Jason Link and the animation team on this FESV tool, and um, uh, it's really great. I think uh, you can, uh, you can, at the end of this talk, Howard will show you how to download it and play with it yourself. Um, I suspect that uh, looks like we have about 300 people on the call. I suspect that um, the youngest 100 will be playing with this in just minutes. It's very easy, and uh, uh, my kids love it, and we think that you'll love it too. Uh, so we're going to check out uh, VESV here. We're going to go to the Pacific region. And um, so this is the, this is the, the animation. We're going to look at the Hawaiian Islands. This is and the Pacific Coral Habitat and we'll dive right down. This is the newest region that uh, Howard and the animation team have, have brought to life for you. Um, you can see the cameras coming down and we get sort of a, a scuba diver's view of this coral system, uh, which is really uh, neat for me to see. Um, we can move up in the water column just a little bit, uh, just to uh, get off the bottom just a bit, and we can start to look around. Um, you'll see species icons on the edge here and a time slider on the bottom. 
but let's start by looking at stingrays. So if we click on the stingray icon, you'll see uh, on the bottom there, you'll see a time series plot for stingrays. It shows you their abundance through time. This happens to be uh, from an ecopath model for the Hawaiian Islands. Um, but again, like Howard said, we could also animate this with data from surveys or stock assessments or other sources of information. Right now, the camera is finding those stingrays. And if you uh, go to meeting that we're using to project this is uh, slowing your, your frame rate just a little bit. Um, but you can start to see the fish swimming through the uh, through the field of view of our, our scuba diver. Uh, if you click the stingray icon on the top left, the stingrays will go back to their regular color. And we can go in and uh, zoom in and get a, a better look at some of those stingrays. There they are. And so we can also uh, start to look at some other iconic species. And actually, there's one right there now. So um, there's a monk seal. Um, and you see their time series plot. So that's abundance through time from an ecopath model and the plot on the bottom. The monk seals are currently highlighted white, and the camera is finding them in the frame. And if we highlight that icon again, they'll go back to the regular color now that they've been found. And there they are. We can start to see them swimming through the camera, uh, giving us a sense of what this coral reef ecosystem looks like and uh, some of the species we might find there. Um, we can check out some other species. So on the left, in, in the icons, you can see the unicorn fish. Uh, so a neat coral reef fish. We see their abundance trend from the data on the bottom. And the camera right now is going to find the, um, find the unicorn fish for us. So they're highlighted white. And we can zoom in on them just a little bit and uh, highlight their icon again to get a good picture of them. Just, uh, if you just tap their icon again, they will turn back to their regular color. So uh, the Hawaiian systems are some of the newest ones that have been animated. Um, and uh, for those of us who are not from the, the coral reef world, uh, it's, it's a nice way to view the data and the ecosystem, uh, in this case, from model output. But uh, we can also animate this with with other data types as well, for instance, uh, dive surveys. Uh, the final thing I just want to point out here is there's a massive coral icon on the on the right. Um, you can click on the massive corals. Um, and if you wait just a second, you'll see their time series. So in this model projection, their abundance is predicted to decline through time. And the camera right now is going to find those massive corals. And if, let's let the, uh, Let's let the animation catch up here. And if we zoom in just a little bit, you can see the coral there. And if we use the time slider through time, you'll see the coral start to sort of fade out. And that's because their abundance is declining in the data that we're feeding into this animation. Let's see if we can see that. So there's a coral. And as we move through time, it'll start to uh, It'll start to fade out. Go to meeting is just slowing us down just a little bit, but that's hopefully you get the idea. So we're going to go back and look at another new region that Howard and the team just animated. Um, so we'll we'll hit return and we'll go back to the uh, pelagic Pacific region. Uh, so we're going to dive down. And you can hear us sort of bubbling down through the water column. Um, this happens to be some uh, model output from a Thermizer model by Phoebe Woolworth Jeffcoats from the Pacific Islands Fishery Science Center. Um, but it lets us see a very different system. So it's slightly less populated, of course, than the, the really uh, rich coral reef. But we start to see, um, in particular, you see a bunch of lancet fish here. and. Uh, the really neat thing about VESV for me is that we get to compare scenarios. So we can compare this uh, baseline model scenario. We're going to go up to the top right-hand corner and pick a, a pelagic fishing higher scenario. 
and that is going to animate the world um, in a higher fishing scenario. And so, for instance, we can now click on Lancet Fish. This is really kind of the power of this tool. Uh, we can click on Lancet Fish, and then so we now we see their time series trend on the bottom. And we see uh, green is the base model, and blue is the uh, high fishing model, so higher abundance in the green. And the way the screen is set up now, the left-hand side is um, the, the uh, base case for the green, the higher abundance scenario. And the right-hand side of the screen is the, uh, the higher fishing scenario with lower abundance of um, Lancet fish in particular. Uh, so now we've got Lancet fish highlighted, so they're they're white. Uh, we can we can click the icon again to get them to go back to their regular color. Just let the let go to meeting catch up here, um, and then if we slide, we'll probably slide forward in time just a little bit to see the contrast between the left and the right hand side. So we're looking right now. We see some sharks, we see some mahi, and um, Let's see if we click. Let's click the uh, the Lancet fish icon again, just to sort of highlight them and, and find their maximum density. And there they are. So you can see there's abundance of them in both scenarios on the left hand side of the screen and the right hand side of the screen. But you'll see higher abundance on the left than the right, and you'll actually start to see some of these Lancet fish um, sort of disappear as they move. Uh, from the, the left side to the right side of the screen. Let's just watch that happen for a second. So there they are. There's there's a few. They're able to sort of cross across that divide, um, but they thin out as they move from left to right, just to show you that contrast. There you go. We can pivot the camera, too, to capture that effect. There they go. Uh, so we can also check out the mahi-mahi. Um, or, or Dorado. Um, so we're going to click their icon and let the camera find the highest density of mahi. Uh, and again, you're going to see higher abundance on the left side of the screen versus the right. And they're, they're highlighted white just for effect here. And you'll see them sort of thinning out as they move across that, that center line, uh, illustrating the contrast between the scenarios at the end of this model run. Um, so we, we really view this as a way to, to uh, contrast scenarios and show what the world looks like under, in this case, different options for fishing. Uh, but we can also drive ecosystem models in particular with other sorts of drivers like climate change drivers and other management lever. Uh, and I'll just point out that up at the top, there's an icon, there's a scope icon. And that's going to give you sort of a, a top-down view or a fish finder view. Um, and you can start to see, uh, again, you see some contrast uh, with some higher density, in particular of some of the mahi and uh, lancet fish and some other fish on the left versus the right due to that uh, higher fishing on the right. Uh, so this has been a really fun system for me to learn about uh, and to visualize because it um, uh, it's a bit outside my region. Um, but if we go back and hit return, we can go back to the... Uh, U.S. West Coast. So right now I'm sitting in Seattle, in quarantine in Seattle, and um, we can zoom in on the U.S. West Coast. And we're going to look at the whole model region and the sandy flats and dive down. Uh, but while we're diving, I'll just mention that um, when you when you download this, I recommend you check out the other regions too. There's a really cool visualization of the kelp forests, uh, Central California kelp forests in particular, uh, that you might like. Um, so now we're looking at the, the U.S. West Coast and the California Current. This happens to be some Atlantis uh, ecosystem model projections, uh, and right now we're looking at the base case. Uh, so if we get off the bottom just a little bit, you can get a better look. Um, at some of our flatfish and skates. And then we can move up through the water column uh, with that slider on the right-hand side. Uh, and we can move up through the water column and see um, we just passed through some whiting. We're moving up towards the surface. We see some jellyfish, uh, some squid, sardines, anchovies, and uh, some of the small pelagic fish uh, up near the surface. If we're lucky, we'll get to see there's our orca. 
uh, see some of our iconic species like orcas and whales. Um, so I'm going to show you a contrast now between the base case and a double fishing case. So on the top right, we can click the double fishing case. And these are ecosystem model projections. So we're able to contrast these two, these two worlds. Um, so now, for instance, if we look at a species like sardine, uh, there's higher abundance in the base case than the high fishing case. So basically, we'll see higher abundance on the left versus the right. And we can use the, actually, right now, the binocular tool is finding the sardines. And we can click their icon again to get them to go back to their regular color. And you can start to see um, start to see the contrast between the left versus the right. Yeah, by oh, there's our whale. It's always fun to see a whale swimming through. Let's see. We're in our in our school of sardines. Let's hit the binocular tool again to get a good a good uh, sort of high density of sardines. We can zoom in just a little bit. <laughs> Always fun to see the orcas. All right, there they are. And we'll see them sort of right there. Uh, not sure if you can see it with, with the uh, frame delay, but you can see them thinning out as they move from left to right, um, which is essentially from the base case to the high fishing scenario. Um, we see sometimes we'll, we'll get lucky and we'll see some uh, some salmon here and also some uh, birds from the from the bottom. Uh, so we can also check out some other species up in the upper water column like anchovy. So if we click on the anchovy icon, um, again we see their time series plot on the bottom. So we're going to expect higher abundance in the left versus the right. And they're highlighted white. We can zoom in on a school and see that that visual contrast. There they are. So we get a good a good clear look at our anchovy. Um, the animators and artists have been busy uh, learning how to how to draw and animate all of these fish. Um, and there's a really nice library of creatures to be uh, shared for other regions. And I just want to take a minute and show you one more system. Uh, so do do get a if you get a chance to check out uh, some of the other regions here, Monterey Bay in particular, and some of the other habitats. But uh, we're going to go back and check out the Northeast. So I happen to be sitting in Seattle, where I'm based, uh, but my native habitat originally was the Mid Atlantic Bight. So we're going to go to the Northeast U.S. Continental Shelf Mid Atlantic Bight and dive down and look at the, the cobble habitat. So this is a very different system. Um, it's much shallower. You, you'll get a sense of that um, in just a second. Uh, we can move up, up in the water column just a little bit. Let's just move up in the water column and see what we see here. Um, We'll see some flatfish. Uh, this region has, in particular, a lot of squid. Uh, folks there in that region will be familiar with the, the density of squid. Uh, see some sharks. Uh, typically, we'll see quite a few jellyfish here. And uh, you can see also we're sort of moving up through the water column here. If we move up with the slider on the right, um, it's it's a much shallower system. And you get a sense of that just from the animation, just just like in uh, in the real world. So uh, a lot of squid in the system, and then we're moving up into the upper water column. I see some sharks, and there should be some menhaden here as well. We're actually going to do a scenario comparison here, comparing the baseline scenario uh, to a double fishing on small pelagic scenario. And 
so now we're still up in the water column and we can see some of our small pelagic species. Uh, let's click on butterfish, which is one of our um, sort of uh, in interesting small pelagic species in the Northeast US. And you can see their time series trend uh, is going to have higher abundance in the base case versus a high fishing case. So we expect higher abundance on the left side of the screen versus the right. We can see that in the time series plot, and we'll see that here in the animation. And you can click on the icon again uh, just to make them go back to their, their regular color. And there they are. Um, so in a minute, I'm going to hand it back to Howard. Um, I, uh, if we just hit return and go back to, to the other regions, uh, if we uh, go back to the full map, you can see uh, some of the other regions that you're welcome to check out. Um, I already mentioned the kelp forest on the US West Coast. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico uh, has multiple models and data types animated as well. Um, and I highly recommend that you check those out as well. Um, I'm not going to dive down here, but I do want to point out that you can sort of check out these different regions. Uh, you can also check out the uh, particular spots on a map. So you don't have to just look at the whole ecosystem or a predefined region. You're welcome to highlight uh, spots in the map. <laughs> um, Isaac, is there the top right. pretty good coverage of of U.S. waters, there were some questions about whether um, Alaska and Southeast Florida in particular were covered. Um, yeah, there's quite a few. Actually, let's see. Um, I'm going to hand it back to Howard in just a second, but uh, I'll just mention that for the Gulf of Mexico, there's multiple models and data types um, uh, animated and available already sort of preloaded with with the tool, with VESV. Um, for the Southeast Atlantic, um, we don't have um, the data sets preloaded. Let, let me jump in there, Isaac, if I could. So we, we've got uh, Southeast US, we've got several scenarios for the Gulf, particularly the west side of Florida. We're working with our friends in the South Atlantic Bight. We're also talking to our colleagues in Alaska people are interested in getting into say the Chesapeake Bay or other regions, we're happy to talk to you. But right now we've just been building these kind of major region by major region. So thank you. Okay, thank you guys. And and I'll follow up that when we get to the question period because there's there's uh, questions about using it in, in non-US regions too, but we can follow up during the question and answer. Great, thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, I'm going to hand it back to Howard in just a second, but I'll also mention that um, I've had uh, some success uh, helping folks at in Canada at DFO animate uh, the Scotian Shelf, um, and uh, Howard and Jason can talk more about the portability of these species. But a lot of the um, a lot of the effort is in terms of animating particular species, um, and if you have a blue shark and we have a blue shark already animated, the whole process is a lot easier. So. I'll hand it back to Howard. Thanks a lot, and I look forward to your questions. Okay, and I just switched over to you, Howard. Okay, so are you seeing my screen then? Oh, start, okay. All right. Uh, so thanks everybody for taking a look. Um, I'll provide a little more information if you're interested in using the tool. Uh, here's our, uh, our website right now. I'll talk a little bit about more about that in just a second here. Uh, I did want to just reiterate our, our major take home points of the, you know, I think this uh, it's a great online resource for educators uh, and, uh, you know, whether it's in an informal, you know, aquarium or, or environmental education center type setting or, or even for schools, um, uh, you know, could be a good useful uh, virtual exhibit. We certainly want to get some feedback, suggestions, uh, any scenarios or data you would want us to visualize, and we'll sort of uh, talk with you more about that if you have things in mind. Um, uh, right, so here is the, just so you can see it all, <coughs> um, the, the website, and you can email e either any of the three of us, and uh, 
we'll be glad to talk with you more about it. We'll, we'll take some general <clears throat> questions now. If you have more specific things, we can certainly uh, talk with you more about it uh, online or over email or okay. phone call. So. Would one of you um, during the Q&A be able to take the the any web links uh, like the one that's shown right now and put it in the chat box, people, like, so that people can copy copy and paste it? Uh, uh, but you don't have to do that right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just I'll do that. Right now. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Howard. Sorry. Oh no, that's that's good. I'll I'll stop now and take any questions, comments. Uh, for e either any of us, Jason, Isaac, or myself. Okay, great. Okay, well, thank you guys. I mean, this it's so fun to to watch, um, except for the loss of species. Um, okay, so we have a ton of questions, and we'll sort of start going through it. Um, is Vesvi compatible with Chromebooks? Uh, should be. Uh, I mean. Uh, so we have our, our, our web link. If you go to this website, uh, click on it, you'll see a button for an online application. And uh, you, know, you should be able to do it that way. Uh, we also have downloadable for, for versions for your PC, uh, Macs, or even Linux machines. Um, I'm not sure about the processing power and space on a Chromebook, but you know, if nothing else, you can certainly access it, the, the, the online application. Uh, from this website and, and start running it as long as you have an internet connection and reasonable uh, graphics. Okay, great. Um, let's see, there was a question about animating the Great Barrier Reef. So I like just sort of use that. There, there were a number of questions for um, non-US areas as well as estuaries um, within the US, like Chesapeake Bay. Uh, what are the, what are, was the applicability there? the process um, uh, in, in theory we could you know uh, animate anything <laughs> um, you know we've got a good system in place and, and, and a good group to work with a group of animators and software developers to work with so in theory we can do anything I mean uh, it, you know it's it does take a little effort to do that to to build these out to build in the species um, you know we've been primarily focused on on building out for the U.S., uh, you know, for sort of the the, the NOAA um, purview. Um, but if we have international partners uh, that are interested in, in, you know, building out for another region, you know, we could certainly talk with them about that. Um, and of course, you know, you somebody suggested Chesapeake Bay. That would be fairly straightforward, as we have most of the species, or at least most of the iconic species for the Chesapeake Bay. We have those built. And so there would be a, a bit of you know changes to the software to be able to drill down into the Chesapeake, but many of the species are already in place for that. So okay, and there was also a question about the Great Lakes. So there's no reason it could, would it be applicable to freshwater as well? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I just uh, could could be built out for that. That's true. Would hey yeah. Howard, are you okay if I in on this question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So. Um... Thanks, Sarah, and thanks for everybody asking the questions. The, the point of this is we're just trying to show what we can do in a way to show off new data. If people really want to try it in their system, what we've done is, is we've expanded the species list, or we've used, like, if you have cod, we have cod, we can do that. I think Isaac mentioned in the Scotian Shelf example. So we can try it out, you know, real quick and dirty with, with other data from other systems. We can also, as Howard was saying, begin to look into adding other systems or other regions within a system we already have. So it, the, the point is, is it's pretty flexible as long as people have the data and the ability to work with us and our partners who help to animate this, we could probably be able to do something if people are interested. So just give us an email as Howard shows, our emails are on the slide there. We can follow up accordingly. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, there's also a number of questions about using it for teaching. There's a lot of teachers on who, uh, and who would be very excited to use it in their classrooms. Are there already any educational components, or have you had anyone use it um, in a teaching capacity so far? Um, in a in a formal teaching component, as sort of a curricular lesson plan or something like that. We have it. We have talked with some educators about it and have 
you know, you know, kind of started to sketch up some plans, but nothing uh, fully implemented there. Um, in a, a less formal setting uh, uh, for education, you know, environmental education center or aquarium or something, you know, you can set it up and, and start start playing with it. It uh, even works on a touch screen, so you could, you know, use your hands to do all the diving and scrolling that we were doing with a mouse. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Howard. Uh, let's see. Um, are there any different climate scenarios available? Yes, we, yes. we do have some sure. uh, ocean, ocean acidification ones that we didn't show. Um, uh, but uh, in, anything that you can sort of, you know, you kind of have a, to link up models to get a climate scenario, anything that you could, uh, you know, use an existing model uh, for one of these, you know, the, the quickest way to do that, if you had one in mind, is if you have uh, an existing model that is driven by climate, you know, to read those uh, data into to the system, you could get rolling right away. Um, Isaac, you, know, you wanted to say something? I wanted to go back to that education question. Uh, it, it, we're glad to work with folks who, who have ideas, who would like to develop this for, you know, some sort of lesson plan. We'd be glad to talk with you more about that, so please uh, do contact us. Yeah, and uh, just in terms of okay. the uh, uh, just in terms of the scenarios for climate change, global change, ocean acidification, uh, a bunch of those are preloaded, like Howard mentioned. Uh, you know, specifically at NOAA and with international collaborators, we're constantly working on fairly complex ecosystem models, um, and you know, Besvi gives us a way to to actually bring those to people and make them available to you. Um, so uh, you're welcome to look around in VESV. There's a, quite a few, I think for all of, for most of these systems, there are ocean acidification scenarios loaded, uh, which happen to be from uh, a paper comparing a suite of Atlantis ecosystem models across the world under acidification scenarios. So um, yeah, we're actively working on them and VESV is kind of one of the ways that we bring them uh, to folks and show you something a little more interesting than you know tables and and uh, static graphs. Okay, thank you. All right, that's great. And I, I guess I just Go mentioned, uh, Howard's got a um, uh, Howard and team have put together a really great user manual that documents where all of these data sources are, including the models and the climate change uh, citations there. Okay, and as um, you're sort of. There, there's a number of questions sort of asking, um, as you're watching something, is there any information, like is there any our way of giving viewers information about why things are happening or what is happening, any sort of description um, or providing any sort of background information on the ecosystem? Yeah, right now, uh, as Isaac was alluding to, it's it's mostly just documented in those you know, scientific journals. You know, I, I could see your point where you'd want to be able to um, you know, have something a little less little less dense than a, a scientific journal article to talk about that. And, uh, you know, as those needs develop uh, uh, for particular, you know, especially educational um, applications, we'd be glad to, to work with you and talk with you more about how to do that. Okay. Okay. Um... And Sarah, I, sorry, I just want to mention, I, I put a link to... You asked for the download link. I just mm -hmm. sent that in the chat to you, but I'm not sure if it's uh, visible to everyone on the call. So perhaps you could forward that. Sure. Uh, I don't think I sent it the right way. Okay. Oh yeah, no, I okay. I didn't notice that. Yes, it's all sent to me. I will post it for everyone. Um, Isaac and Jason and Howard, um, I think you've been reading the questions. Were there any you particularly wanted to address right now? I'll start working through them. We have plenty. Good questions. Uh, keep keep them coming. Uh, okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Just okay. I didn't know if you had seen any. Okay. Um, uh, there are are there models contemplating other types of drivers such as oil spills? Um, yeah. 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 We actually do have one for the Gulf of Mexico. We didn't get to that one, but that's again from the, the paper that Isaac mentioned. And as you'll notice, you know, the color and texture of water changed over time. So it's not just species count or like you saw the uh, corals bleaching over time. So there's things we can do with 
not just the abundance of species, but other effects, the cloudiness, the color of the water um, to help illustrate things like oil spills or eutrophication. So we do have some of those types of scenarios in the Gulf of Mexico. And I know more data is being collected down there. So, you know, there's certainly uh, opportunities to incorporate new, new science as it's developed. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, another question that came up, uh, is there an in-faunal component? Not um, um, not not in much detail. Um, so many of the models that are being animated here do have uh, in fauna. Um, the uh, but but again, those models are sort of uh, behind the curtain. Really, the the visualization in Vesvi is showing us what a sort of a diver's eye view looks like. And so um, there may be in fauna in the models behind the curtain. Uh, but in terms of what's being visualized and animated here with VESV, um, uh, there, there isn't uh, there many in fauna species. We do have some, uh, so for instance, for the Northeast, we have scallops um, uh, and you know some, some benthic inverts, uh, you saw some corals, uh, but the actual in fauna are not, uh, not visible to the diver. And so they're for the most part, not really in the animation. Okay, great. Um, do you, are you planning any trainings? I know you said there was documentation. Uh, what, is there, are there any live trainings planned? Um, at this stage, we haven't really outlined any. We've you know, discussed some possibilities for that. Uh, so if, if you're interested in us hosting a training or uh, that sort of thing uh, for your center or, or for your region, you know, if, you know, please contact us and we can uh, we can you know, ha, you know discuss that with you. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. There are questions about geothermal vents. Several questions. Uh, is that currently in there? No, we don't have any no. geothermal vents scenarios. Okay. Um, okay. You know, again. Uh -huh. There's the, the it's the, 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 it's pretty wide open to what can be incorporated. It's just not something we've included at this stage. Okay, okay, no problem. Let's see. Um, sorry, I'm sorry. In a day to look through everything. Uh, let's see. And then it, as somebody had asked whether it is applicable to fresh water, and the answer is yes, but it would, it has to be built out for for other scenarios. Right. Right. Okay. And um, let's see, um, could, it, could this uh, software be adapted to track dynamic resource uh, waves and demonstrate this correlation to cetacean abundance in relation to chlorophyll as a proxy food? If that's a scenario uh, that's modeled, we can do that. Okay, so just, it just needs yeah. to be modeled, okay. Yeah, the, the the key thing is that um, that needs so uh, we're we're visualizing abundance trends and those are um, so we're animating it with Vesvi and then there there can be a whole universe of models uh, working on specific hypotheses or um, or drivers and those are sort of separate technical standalone tools we take the output from those tools and we visualize them with Vesvi so. Um, uh, this, think of this as sort of like the front end to visualize and test results from your more complex models. Okay. Okay. Um, Sarah, question, how do you introduce your own? Yeah. I was just going to say one other thing is if people have scenarios they'd like us to run or test, shoot us ideas. We're always looking for ideas that are, you know, new and exciting. We're happy to take them on board and try them out and put them in here. And if people really, 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 really want to try this, in the user manual that uh, Howard wrote, there are ways you can actually develop your own scenarios and do some simple changes and explore it that way. So there are options and we're always happy to explore even more scenarios and options. Oh. 
Okay, great. I think people have a lot of suggestions for you, so I suspect you'll be hearing. Um, what if people were going to email, uh, or is there? Do can they? I just posted the link to Vesvi. Um, I had to Google it because I actually couldn't copy and paste from the chat either. Um, I just put in the link. Um, is there a plate way for them to get in touch with you through that that web page, or would you prefer a direct email? Uh, a direct email is probably better. Um, the, we, so this is in our fisheries ecosystem uh, or fisheries integrated toolbox. Uh, so our email link in that website is, is to the overall toolbox coordinator and that she would then forward the email address, the e any emails that she picks up from, from the web page to be in the, that would delay things a bit uh, potentially. So if you just email any of us directly, we'll We'll be able to respond a little more quickly. Okay, great. Um, is there, if I was going to post somebody's email, oh, they're all there. Okay, great. Yeah, right. This is first name, okay. last name, noah.gov. Okay, uh, there's a question What is the coding base for this? Uh, do you use Q or Python or another programming approach? Um, so it is. Uh, uh, uses the unity gaming engine you know, we're not the we're not the software experts here but we can certainly if you want to talk to them you know put you in touch with those but it's the unity gaming engine engine um and then i think it was was it c sharp or something that the actual coding happens in sounds familiar yeah, yeah that sounds about right uh, okay. uh yeah okay we we only ever do with the xml science. file yeah for loading a scenario, so that's as much of the programming as I'm familiar with. <laughs> okay. Um, have you looked at um, hurricane impacts in your scenarios? Uh, Not in these don't currently scenarios. Have any no. Hurricane Not scenarios that, that I'm aware of, uh, but certainly if you have some. Uh, some data or model output for that we could we can throw it in there you know in an existing re region and see and take a look yeah okay great uh let's see look, look so other it's not too um Now, is all work on the uh, VESV right now through you guys, through your system? Like, it's not anything that sort of people can take and manipulate on their own right now. How 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 does that work? Um, work you at the moment? can you can uh, if you download the software uh, from the website. There, we have some links for that. Uh, when you download the si software, it also will download uh, some some backend software called Scenario Builder. And so you can take time series and enter your own. And, there's, and, then, and this is all described in the user manual for if you're a, if you want to get real techy, you can read in your own data using that scenario builder uh, and um, you know read in scenarios for yourself for the regions that are built out. If you wanted to do more stuff with a region that's not currently built out or with a species that that we don't currently have, uh, you. Kind of want to work with us on that and, and even if you uh, go your own way with the scenario builder and you want to kind of run stuff by us you know feel free to contact us and say hey i, I did this how's that look? Does that look about right to you or how do i adjust it you know we'll be glad to to help either way um, okay thank you howard um are the if for the what you've shown so far is that all modeled data or is any of it based on actual surveys? Yeah, uh, yeah. So the yeah. Oh, go ahead, Isaac. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So what I what I showed here are model outputs from um, three different types of ecosystem models. But uh, actually, what's preloaded when you download the software right now includes time series of abundance from surveys. So, uh, for instance, groundfish surveys on the West Coast that um, give you abundance trends for uh, about 12 or 15 different species, those are already preloaded. Um, and then we also uh, have scenarios preloaded that are essentially um, the stock assessment results from the different regions. 
So uh, really any sort of time series, any sort of multi-species time series is uh, easy to animate here. And uh, quite a few of those are preloaded. And if, if you do want to, you know, do some stuff on your own to explore that, uh, again, there's the, you know, you can download it online or or uh, use the online application. And we also have a link to a video that uh, Isaac recorded. So you can look back at that video in case you forgot something from, from today and also the user manual. So there's uh, hopefully the, enough information that you can start some, uh, you know, exploration on your own with it and, uh, yeah. Are there any issues with um, sort of doing screen grabs uh, from existing models and using those just just credit it to um, NOAA or is, is that something people can share? Yes, this is, you know, this is, uh, you know, publicly you know, funded work, so it's yours to use. Uh, we do ask that you would you know, credit credit us and just you know, maybe point people to the website um, in case they're interested in using it. But yeah, there's no okay. reason you can't use screenshots from this. It's tricky okay. to get a screenshot because the software sometimes disappears when you try to screenshot it, but, <laughs> uh, but it can be done. Okay, great. And um, are people able to access the raw data um, that's going into the visualizations? Yes. Uh, um, so the the scenarios, um, uh, building the scenarios is really uh, nothing more than just uh, putting together a spreadsheet of uh, abundance through time. Uh, so really, if, if you can make a few columns in a spreadsheet, you can make the input files and then um, all of those input files happen to be sitting um, in with the preloaded software, um, and that the user manual points you to those. So um, it's yeah, it's all there to grab. Okay, great. Um, this is a good question. Have you taken any look at uh, incorporated sort of um, non-animate objects like plastic? We have it, but I think that can be readily incorporated. Like I said, we have different effects that can be added for scenarios. Like you, you notice, you know, out in Hawaii where the water was nice and blue, when you got inshore in the West Coast, it was kind of greenish, or over the cobble, it was kind of sandy brown water. So we can certainly, you know, uh, in our effects files, you know, incorporate that sort of thing. Uh, that would take a little, little bit of programming. But it's certainly in, in the realm of not a heavy lift. And Howard, if I could okay, great. if there's um if there are impacts due to the plastics that people are modeling, we could also put those in. I, I think the, the key thing we keep coming back to is if there are scenarios out there and they output, you know, spreadsheets or CSV files of time series data, we can probably show it. Okay, great. Thank you, Jason. Um, and I just put up, there's been several questions about uh, people who would like to access the recording. So I just put up the general link uh, where we'll archive the recording. Um, it should be available by tomorrow. Um, also, there's been some requests for the um, just to, the PowerPoint slides. Are you able to share those, Howard? We could create a PDF and post it in the same place. Yeah, certainly. You can, okay. if you great. if you will want to distribute them that way, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay. All right, great. Uh, we'll, we'll do that and we'll post that. So um, if you go to openchannels.org slash webinars and uh, once it's posted, it'll be the top link. Um, over time, it'll it'll go down as we post things above it, but for a while, for the next couple of weeks, it will be at the top of that page. Okay, um, let's see, there's no shortage of questions and I think you will have a lot of people contacting you because uh, people are very keen to see what they can do with it. Um, there's a question about using it to visualize actual management advice. Uh, would you want to speak about this? Yes, um, so actually many of... Go ahead, Isaac, sorry. Uh, I'll just mention many of the scenarios that are already available to you uh, test various configurations of uh, phishing policy, whether it's um, 
shifting fishing areas or shifting uh, changing fishing intensity. And so that's very much um, what's what's available to you right now. Um, and that's yeah, definitely the intention of the tool is to show that visual contrast between uh, scenarios that a manager might pick and to, to animate how those play out in um, various modeling platforms. Yeah. So if you had two different management scenarios, you know, well, with actual fishing management uh, policies implemented and you had forecast that out in, in some sort of model, we could certainly read in those time series data and, and visualize it. Okay, and to put you on the spot just a little, uh, Howard, would you be able to take us on a little tour of the website and show everyone uh, where additional resources are located and the um, the user information? Yeah, I'd be glad to do that. Yeah. Let me um, stop sharing my screen for a second. Is it stop sharing just so I can? Yeah, it's, it's, it's stop hard, sharing. It's hard for me to dance and look no. at my feet at the same time here. So <laughs> no, no, it's, give me a second to uh, uh, pull that up and then I'll reshare. Um, okay. Uh, so. No, there's a reason we don't have people monitor for their own questions. It's impossible to do. Right. Well, not impossible, but I, I, find, I find it not possible for me personally to do. Um, right, right. And I just happened to have shut down. I had it up and I just happened to shut it down. So I didn't want to. Okay. Have no people problem. have to watch me walk through that. <laughs> um, get up. Just a second. Um, oh. Um, Isaac may and Jason, maybe you could take this one in, in the next few seconds. Um, have you found that it works better in some browsers than others, Chrome, Firefox, Explorer, et cetera? Uh, w well, we were just showing you uh, sort of a standalone desktop application. Mm -hmm. um, so it's available for multiple operating systems. And then there's also a, um, a web-based version as well. And I'll, I'll let Jason talk about the web-based version. but. Uh, there's there's a lot of different flavors for everyone to play with, um, from okay. my perspective. Okay. Yeah, we've tested it in in all the usual uh, online software packages, you know, Safari, Microsoft, Explorer, uh, Firefox, all that. Functionally, it works about the same in any of those. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Are you seeing my screen now? We are. Yep. Okay, so this is our fisheries integrated toolbox. Uh, we have our ecosystem tools, and then we can go over here to Vesby. The link I gave you will just take you right here. I think we also have a more public facing sort of web page that will direct you here as well that we broadcast out. So either way, it'll get you here eventually. Um, and th so this is yeah, sort of the home of where it sits right now. Uh, so you'll see. Now here's the the website, little you know, just a real basic information on it. Um, if you want to download it, there's the Windows, the Mac, and the Linux versions you can download by clicking on these links. Um, the online application, you click here. Um, I'm not going to click it right now just because it it's uh, slow on my my home internet connection and probably really slow with GoToMeeting. Uh, well, actually, I could start clicking it and we'll come check it in a minute <laughs> um you know you click this button and just the download applications just takes you back down here again um there's the demonstration video that you could click here or here uh and it'll pop up a new new tab and start showing you the video uh that isaac recorded so just as a reminder of how to do things um the documentation is just uh right here Bunch of PDF files, uh, yeah, PDF file that you can look through. Oh, here's the notes. Somebody asked about, yeah, C Sharp and Unity Graphics Engine. There we go. I thought I remember typing some. That tells you more about just basically how to get started with it, how to run it from the web, how to download and install it, how to navigate around, uh, just uh, exploring different ecosystems, um, how to compare the scenarios, and then if you're, you know. 
want to if you do the downloaded and installed version you can start to load your new scenarios using the scenario builder tool i told i mentioned earlier so all this you know is I'm now lost where i was yeah you know all this you can be found you know just starting here and clicking clicking buttons uh it sets code repository we don't actually have the code out on github but we sort of use github to keep everything together in this toolbox um and yeah there's there it is there's on the web so it didn't take as, as long as i thought so now we're on this it looks a little different because it's in a web browser and i'm using uh, chrome right now uh, but you could do all the same stuff that isaac did uh dive in and i'll think right from the web this is so yeah yeah that's sort of the general information about how to how to grab this stuff and start start using it um we've done everything we can to make it fairly user friendly and, and stuff you can dive into on your own quickly um but if you do have questions that you start to explore, feel free to contact any of us. Okay. Well, All thank right. you, Howard. Um, thank you, Isaac, and thank you, Jason. Um, there is tremendous interest in it. And we have a lot of uh, uh, people are, are, are pretty enthusiastic about this. Um, and I'll be providing all the questions to you you after the webinar so you can see what they were because uh, there's many we weren't able to get to um, but thank you again for doing this we so appreciate it and um, thank you everyone who was able to attend uh, I encourage you to be in touch with them and so learn uh, more about how you can use Vesby. yeah and thank, thank you, you so much for the opportunity Sarah. to present yeah thanks Sarah okay all right well, take okay care. thanks and bye everyone have fun with them. bye y'all